Welcome to Bloodbath and Beyond. Today we review Muck, where the lucky ones are already dead. Brought to us by With and O Productions, written and directed by Steve Walsh, starring Kane Hodder, Lauren Francesca, Lachlan Buchanan, and Laura Jacobs. Muck is about a group of friends who are stuck in a cabin, avoiding the deadly advances of the creepers. Now before we get started with our likes, full disclosure, we did attend the Muck premiere at the Playboy Mansion, but we're gonna keep it real. What do we like about this movie, guys? I'm gonna kick it off with the cinematography because the shots in this film were gorgeous. Everything was so solid. We had Troy, played by Lachlan Buchanan. He's covered in gas. There's just like a burning building in the background and it looked amazing. Another awesome shot was Mia, played by Lauren Francesca. She has just killed a creeper and she's covered in like mud and she's just glistening and the lighting is perfect and she gets sprayed by a sprinkler. It just hits me right in the teenage boy. And like we got strong humor right off the bat with Billy's character. I was laughing for the first 15 minutes of this movie non-stop because it was that hilarious. Dad's gonna get it first. She's, she's fucking hot. Respectfully, I want to disrespect that ass. I like, like had to do it quick because she's, she's a fucking goner. What I really like about this movie is that it was thoughtful. It was thought out. They wanted the future. If they can start streaming in 4K, they wanted to be ready for that. They used practical effects, which work. Uh, this is actually part of a trilogy, which is great. He wrote it in such a way that it makes me want to know what's going to happen in the next one. And I need those answers as to who the creepers are. Knowing that we're going to get all our answers in another movie just makes me want to see that movie. The characters that were involved in this movie are people you like. They're people you're laughing with that you understand. You see them killing the creepers. You see them fighting. A lot of times characters don't come across as intelligent people or even people that would survive. But this time you have a group of characters that you're actually rooting for. I do want to touch on the acting in this movie because the acting was very, very well done. I think a standout role was definitely Mia played by Lauren Francesca. She did a fantastic job and I'm blown away because I already follow her on YouTube. She's a YouTube celebrity. She showed her chops in this film. Bryce Draper who played Noah, he was one of the main characters and he did a really good job yeah. in this film. All said and done, I think everyone in this film delivered their lines perfectly and played the roles that they were supposed to play. Any good horror movie has a good looking cast. Beautiful cast. My favorite was definitely Laura Jacobs who had an amazing like washroom shower scene. The fact that Lauren Francesca was pretty much naked throughout this entire film just walking around in like bra and panties. We've got like the reserve type too like with Stephanie Danielson. It was nice that we had a good girl in it. And I'm gonna be honest, the guys were super handsome. And I'm not being gay or anything, because they all had eight packs. Yeah, they were turning heads when they walked into the bar. What don't we like about this film, guys? It kind of took me out of the story at moments when I'm seeing what is happening at the house and what's happening at the bar, and I don't even know when it's actually taking place. My biggest complaint actually is, I know we mentioned this earlier and we kind of liked it, but I don't think it was self-contained enough. We start off, they're already out of danger, but we know they were in some sort of danger and then we're cut off knowing that there's more to come. We have the knowledge that it's a, the second movie in a three-part series but I just felt like it needed a little more self-containment to truly work on its own. I'm also asking why are women getting raped. We didn't have a backstory for it and we didn't really get it. There was a scene there that just needed to happen that we knew either there was an ending that they were going towards or there was a beginning where they were coming from and we missed that. From the promotion of this film, I thought Kane Hodder was going to be a big part of it, and unfortunately, he was not. He looked cool, he was menacing, and he was fucking beefy as fuck, but unfortunately, he doesn't last that long. There's one scene that I felt very out of place, and that is Noah at the bar. Considering that his friends were stranded, injured. He should have been in and out, grabbed that phone, made the call and back to the cabin. We didn't need that like 15-20 minutes of him getting picked up at the bar. I didn't think there was enough emotional resonance. There wasn't any impact on what they're going through. It's time for our final thoughts and ratings. Muck was my most anticipated film of 2015 and I felt that it delivered. It looked nice, the acting was good, the characters were great, 
and I really enjoyed myself watching this. I felt Steve had marketed this movie perfectly to make me want to see the sequel and want to see the prequel. The only thing I didn't really like was how the story was executed because it seemed like a bumpy ride. But it was still a good film and I greatly enjoyed it. So that being said, I'm going to give this three and a half frothy Walshes out of five. Muck is an enjoyable film. You can tell that it's done by people who understand horror, especially the slasher genre. They get what we like about it. There are two ways to look at this movie. It's either the middle of a trilogy or it's a movie by itself. Being part of a trilogy, you can see it as being more, as understanding that it's going somewhere and it's coming from somewhere. By itself, it's lacking certain things that we need for it to be enjoyable as just one movie. So I have to give Muck 3.5 pitchforks to the stomach out of five. Muck was a great looking horror film. I love the aesthetics and I love the lighting and the cinematography. I thought the acting was fantastic. As a standalone film, you might not love it, but knowing that it's the middle part of a trilogy, I really enjoyed myself because I think there's gonna be a lot cooler things coming your way and our way. So I'm gonna give this 3.8 Jacqueline Swedberg's getting sprayed by glass in slow motion out of five. As always, thank you for watching. If you've seen it, let us know in the comments below. If you haven't, please watch it right now. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you for watching.